Hey guys, in this HVACR training video, we're going to tell how to read the gauges in order to see if the R22 outdoor condenser is low on refrigerant. So, an outdoor condenser is what's outside on an air conditioning system of a building. So, if it's a heat pump, it would be considered an outdoor unit or a heat pump, but this is a condenser because this is for air conditioning only. So, how you read to see if you're low on refrigerant is if the unit has a fixed orifice metering device or a TXV metering device. That's the very first thing that you want to check besides checking the, the filter uh, and checking the airflow, making sure the blower motor's uh, putting out the correct airflow. But basically, if it has a thermostatic expansion valve that looks like this, then you know you have to check the refrigerant charge with this gauge and the temperature on the small liquid line. If you have a fixed orifice such as one of these, either a piston chamber with a piston inside or a capillary tube, you're going to need to check the refrigerant charge level with this gauge right here and the temperature on the suction line. So we have a the fuel piece ST4 a temp reader, so I can go back and forth between, this is the suction line on T2, which is the large line that's coming back to the compressor, and this small line is where the refrigerant is in a complete subcooled liquid and heading towards that metering device in the inside of the house. So we're just going to go ahead and pay attention to this liquid line. Uh, basically what we have is right on here we have about 93 degrees. Uh, R22 right here you see that uh, we have three refrigerant PT charts overlaid onto this gauge right here. The outer ring is pressure, the inner rings are saturated temperature for these three refrigerants. You got to know what refrigerants in the outdoor unit. In this case, we know it has R22 as stated on the rating plate. And we're following it up to where we see the needle is and we read pressure and we follow it into the sat temperature. And presently it is at 92. We're looking down at it from the camera right here. I also took the lenses off so you could see it a little clearer, but it's reading 90. 92.5 or so right now if you're looking at it straight on and our actual temperature is 92 so that's about 0.5 degrees of subcool so that that's a low refrigerant charge because up on the rating plate it says that the TXV subcooling should be 10 degrees so the subcooling is the pressure basically converted to saturated temperature so it's the sat temp of the outdoor unit so 92.5 minus the actual temperature on the liquid line. So that's 0.5 degrees. So I'm just going to say it again a little shorter. It's the saturated temperature of the refrigerant minus the actual temperature. That's subcooling. And so we have about 0.5 degrees of subcooling. And that means that it's the refrigerant's barely coming out of the saturated state in the outdoor unit. It should be able to come out of the saturated state as a complete liquid and then lower in temperature from there until it comes out here. So it should actually be 10 degrees lower after the refrigerant comes out of the saturated state in this outdoor unit before it comes into the liquid line and over to the indoor unit and goes to the TXV. We need to increase the subcooling, so that means that we need to add refrigerant over on the low side gauge. Sometimes when you're really low on refrigerant, your saturated temperature on the indoor coil will be below freezing. So in this case, we see it's still at about 40 degrees, but if it was really low on refrigerant, uh, then it would be possibly below freezing, which would end up freezing your evaporator coil. Let's just take a look at what the superheat is, just out of curiosity. Uh, so it's 40 degrees here and 53 degrees on the suction line. So 50, so this is a little bit opposite. This is the actual temperature minus the saturated temperature and we have about 14 degrees of superheat. So we must still be able to get some liquid to that metering device in order to be able to maintain that kind of superheat. Uh, but we are low on refrigerant, so we would need to add refrigerant into the low side a little at a time. If you are low on refrigerant, then what you do is you can use a leak detector like this bubble uh, solution right here and basically you're going to rub that on all the joints that are visible to see if you can find the leak but a lot of times it's in the coils in the outdoor and the indoor unit and you might need a tool that's a little bit more sophisticated in order to find that such as a electronic sniffing tool for refrigerant such as this that's the back rack and form it too or uh, maybe an ultrasonic leak detector such as the AccuTrack VPE GN Pro or another leak testing method.
So remember to tell if you have a low refrigerant charge for a system that has a TXV and is a single speed or two speed outdoor compressor, what you're looking for in the high stage, if it's a two speed compressor, what you're looking for is low refrigerant charge equals a low subcooling and a normal to high superheat. For a system that has a piston or a capillary tube as a fixed orifice, a low refrigerant charge is indicated by high superheat and low subcooling. If you have high superheat and high subcooling, then that's a what's called a liquid line restriction. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click right here. If you want to subscribe, click right here. If you want to see another video on leak detection, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at EEC Service Tech Channel.